Gotta make sure y'all can hear me. I know y'all may be listening, but do you hear me? I'm about to go ahead and get this stream started real quick. I was gonna make a video about it, but I figured my mic's probably too loud. I was gonna make a video about it, but I figured I might as well do a live stream and get everybody else input on it live rather than, you know, y'all just being in the comment section and then I see the reply when I see it. I prefer for y'all to get instant feedback, say whatever y'all want to say. I'm eventually going to get to the point, I'm trying to put it together to where I'm going to be able to take calls. I'm going to be able to take calls. You want to call up to the stream and all that. We about to get that. Hey, man, regular season about to be crazy. About to be moves made for the regular season. I'm about to take calls and everything. Let me pull up YouTube so I can see the comment section. Okay, okay. I oh, already got people in here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, what's up, Jake Mernian? Richard, what's good? What's up, Scotty? What's poppin'? Yeah, I'm going to, um, like I just said, I'm going to get to the point, hopefully by week one, regular season, I want to get to the point where I can take calls so that y'all not just in the chat talking. Y'all going to actually call up and let y'all voice be heard, too. I'm really trying to create, like, a street scores family, so... With that being said, let me make sure I look okay. Am I good? I'm sorry for the, the outfit and the hat. I just got done cutting grass. I wasn't playing about that. I saw the news. I started getting all the feedback. I went and wrote my notes down, as you can see on the screen. And I'm about to run down the list. Whatever you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, we can get into it. What's good, Rich? What's good, Tommy? What's popping? What's good, mister? What's good, everybody? How y'all feel? Um, I'm not sure if y'all heard me, but I'm about to get it to the point where I can take calls. So y'all can call up here and say what y'all got to say instead of just being in the chat. What's good, Juarez? But I'm about to get into this whole news. I'm not sure if y'all know if y'all super stay tapped into Twitter and all that. I don't have any special... Well, the stream spaz. Okay, I don't have any, like, special... Uh like sources or nothing i'm just i'm on twitter and deep diving google like y'all are but i'm just you know this is my passion so i'm super into it but i wrote down all the notes of all the most important stuff i'm gonna keep updating them but we about to run through this uh that's good tommy that's good oh what's up christian what's good javier it's gonna be dope once so people can call it man i'm telling you bro I'm telling you bro the stream about to be official but that is stream real official you're gonna be able to call in say what you got to say Depending on the topic and stuff. Especially like like when I live stream regular season games, that would be dope to have y'all be able to be able to call in right after the game and say what y'all gotta say about it. You know, we could debate, we can agree, whatever, you know, whatever go down. But um, so yeah, let me go ahead and start getting to the news because there you said I see I see say. A A C say. Okay, I got you, my fault. I got I was just gonna call you Mr. I was just you was just Mr. for me, man. I couldn't I ain't had nothing on that. Nice headgear. Looks great. <laughs> Appreciate it, Zach. Hell to the Redskins. I just got done cutting grass, so I still got the I got the arm sleeves on because I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, so I had to put the arm sleeves on so I wouldn't get ate up by the, you know, mosquitoes and the sun and all that. But, um, so let me go ahead and start getting into it. I'm going to keep looking at the chat while I'm talking, though, because I'm not about to just ramble. I want to get y'all involved. He <laughs> said, chill. All right, so the most important news, I broke it up in most important news, Redskins news, and other news. Bruh, Jake is crazy, bruh. Cam Sims got released, bruh. We about to get to it. That's my third note. And what's good, Rich? Um, So, yeah, so 53-man roster must be finalized by 4 p.m. Eastern time today. Just for those that don't know, I wanted to make sure that was on the screen so y'all knew that. And, you know, just to let you know that the Redskins, like, can't be playing around. This is it's cr it's crunch time right now. It's crunch time. We need to get this done. We're going to have the news by the latest at 8 p.m. usually. That's when they finally, like, release the official, like, depth chart, 53-man roster, all that type of stuff. Right now, we're just getting news of who's getting cut and who's, go like, who's supposedly going to get kept. Nothing's finalized till 4 p.m. Except for the people getting cut. The people that are getting cut are pretty much on waivers. So... To start it off, Josh Doxson, who had 1,100 yards, his longest reception was 57 yards, and eight touchdowns for the Redskins throughout his career since being drafted, is going to be traded or released. 
So the Redskins are looking for suitable trade partners right now. But when in doubt, he's just going to get released. The Redskins are not holding him for this 53-man roster. So by, so by 4 p.m., Josh Doxson is gone whether we find a trade partner or not. They just want him out of here. They're tired of it. He's not a good fit for the scheme. You know, he's a jump ball receiver. They want somebody that can separate a little bit better. So he will be released or traded by 4 p.m., which is, what, two hours and 20 minutes? Just in time for me to watch my get ready to watch my Georgia game? Wait, the Redskins might keep Sean Wilson? Hold up, that's, a, that's an update. That's an update. Hold on, Sean Wilson. He's hurt, so what is he, how are we going to do that? I gotta, I'm going to look it up later. Sean Wilson will be killed. Let me add that to the notes. Okay, so I just talked about Josh Doxson. I'm not sure if anybody wants to talk about Josh Doxson, his career or anything. Um, if you want to, just say stuff in the chat. I'm going to reply, but right now I'm going to keep going. Cam Sims is going to be released, and that one really hurt, but <laughs> it's crazy. Cam Sims is gone, but the Redskins, along with other people I'm going to talk about later, will try to retain him through the practice squad if he clears waivers. It's just going to be really hard for somebody like Cam Sims to clear waivers, so we'll see how that goes. But just to, just to summarize for people that's just pulling up, during the regular season, I will figure out a way for y'all to call in and make calls instead of just talking in the chat. I want y'all to have y'all voices heard over the channel too. 53-man roster must be finalized by 4 p.m. Josh Doxson will be traded or released. Either way, by 4 p.m., he's gone. Cam Sims has been released. And then now I'm to the wide receivers, which basically means all wide receivers will be Paul Richardson, Trey Quinn, Terry McLaurin, Kelvin Harmon, which are obvious. The interesting news is that we kept Steven Sims and Robert Davis. That is crazy. That is crazy. Let me get to the comments. Uh, Alexander and Doxon, the biggest shock so far, but they really ain't shocks. Maybe P. Ryan. 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's nearly 7 p.m. here. <laughs> that means 8 p.m. Eastern time for full squad. Gonna have to wait until 1 a.m. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, you're with you in the U.K., right? Golly. Nah, no more Doxon talk. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that? Okay, I'm cool with that. I hate times. I feel that. I used to um be in Vegas a lot, so it was weird. Going between the West Coast time zone and the Eastern time zone all the time. Uh, hey, JDC Clark, he put up two dollars for the chat. Hey, everybody, stop what you're doing. I don't care if you're texting somebody, if you're talking to your moms on the phone. You need to. Everybody needs to look at what JDC Clark did and be more like him. Shouts out to JDC Clark, man. I can't wait till I get to a point where I can start, you know, really like showing appreciation for the people that's donating. Like, if I can give y'all some, I'm gonna start getting some merch going or something like that. Trying to be able to show appreciation for that. Because those $2 go a long way, y'all. I'm not playing. Oh, that's five euros? That's like five fifty American. Okay, Scotty. We doing it big in the chat today, man. Like I said, bro, I really, really, I got to figure out a way to show appreciation for everybody that's donating. Because that 2 and $5 go a long way, bro. And appreciate it. I will keep doing my thing, man. I'm trying to, trying to stay on their neck. All right, let me see what I missed. What's up, Amanda? How you doing? Javier Cam Sims had one bad game and we cut him. That's a good point. He really he dropped really he dropped one ball. He really didn't even have that bad of a game, but Steven Sims just showed out. And Robert Davis has so much potential that I guess they just couldn't cut Robert Davis. It's crazy. But yeah, he didn't really have that bad of a game. They kind of hate it. What's up, Rico? What's up, Brody? Hey, what's good, Daily? My boy, um, Brody. I don't know. Wait, Brody, where you at? I don't know where Brody is. He he not in vision. He's not in my eyesight right now. I don't know. He's probably in another room. What's up, JDC Clark? Was good. Um, Michael Rodriguez. What happened so far? So I have the notes up there. I'm gonna talk about everything. I have important notes, other Redskins news, just regular stuff like who got cut, who's being kept, and then I have other league news that will pertain to us that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna wrap it up to involve the Redskins some way. I'm trying to have it, most of it on the screen so y'all can see when I'm talking about other stuff for those of y'all who's not caught up on everything. But, um, yeah, Michael, it's a lot going on. What's good, Michael, first of all? We are trying to trade Treadwell for Josh. Really? Laquan Treadwell, that's what you're talking about from the Vikings? They, they... Yes, merch. Okay, Jay, I'm going to get some merch out there, bro. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be official this year. I'm going to have the phone lines up so y'all can call in. The chat can hear y'all. 
and everything. You're going to be able to, you know, speak your piece. We can we can debate. You know, we might disagree. We might agree, whatever. I'm going to try to have, like, a live stream during the game. I may cut it off and start up a new live stream post-game just to have it as two separate videos so it won't run on too long. Because the live stream might go on for hours depending on, like, how big or important or whatever happened in the game that we're live streaming talking about. So I'm going to get to the, all of that. But um, I, I can't believe Cam got cut. Yeah, bro, daily, that's crazy, bro. That is, bro, that's that's insane. I wasn't expecting that. That caught me off guard. Um, you, But you would think to keep Cam Sims just in case something happens. Bro, I don't think Cam Sims is going to clear waivers and make it to our practice squad. So, it's to me, it's bye-bye Cam Sims. And that really makes me sad because I was really thinking it was about to be Haskins and Cam Sims as the dynamic duo for us. But I guess, I guess, um... I guess they felt otherwise, man. Oh, but this just in? I'm going to get to all of this. Like, if you're just coming in, we're still at the beginning. We're still at the, the, the third line from the top, Cam Sims release and all that. I have not talked about anything else yet. I'm just trying to get to the chat and all of that. Um, but, yeah, Cam Sims is gone. But um, just a tweet I just saw, Sean Wilson will be retained running back. He will more than likely start off on IR. So that's just to give you all an update. I wrote that down, though. Oh, Tommy Walker, real thing. Keep doing your thing, bro. I appreciate it, bro. That $5 goes a long way. Y'all do not understand how serious $2, $5, 5 euros specifically, and $5 go, man. That's hey, that's big-time donation right there, bro. Appreciate that. Like, again, I'm going to try to get some merch. I'm going to try to show some appreciation for the people that donate, seriously. And the people that's just loyal, always pulling up to the stream. I don't need y'all money. I just want y'all support. Make sure I want y'all in here with me. But back to the sports, um, back to the chat. I'm going to get to this stuff, but I just want to make sure the chat ain't left out. Uh, ha ha, that $5 bang on, bro. I'm not trying to big up myself. It's not even an hour pay, and you're not giving us more than that in content. You said, that's fine. not trying to. Oh, appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I didn't understand what you were saying at first. Appreciate that, Scotty. You're a real one. He said, "Tread, you trade or tread for Josh." That's what you trying to say. Are you saying Laquan tread well or trade? Because I know we're trying to trade for Josh, but if if that 4 p.m. hit, they've already said they're just gonna release him. Um, keep the donations going, yes, Tommy. Yeah, hey, yeah, man, let them know. Keep them donations coming, bro. But that's not, bro. I'm just trying to get this news out to y'all. I'm about to read any news on Trent Williams. Uh, basically, it's, from the people that know him best, like D'Angelo Hall and all of them, they're saying he's not coming back week one. But right now, Bruce Allen is being stubborn and, and is not even open to taking calls for trades on him. But did y'all see? Hold on, let me scroll down here real quick. Did y'all see that the the Seahawks got Jadavion Clowney for a third round pick and then Barcavius Mingo and Jacob Martin? We could have put together a better package than that. A third round pick? Come on, Bruce Allen, bro. I know we don't really need a Jadavion, but why, how would it hurt? You can never have too many edge rushes. So, Bruce Allen, you folded on that. Let me highlight this. Bruce Allen, you folded. So, I just wanted to talk about that real quick. So, but, I mean, that's just crazy that we did not, we're did we not trading Trent Williams. We missed out on Jadavion, but we got to see how this goes. We'll have to be patient, Redskins fans. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to highlight what I'm talking about currently. Paul Richardson, Trey Quinn, Terry McLaurin, Kelvin Harmon, Steven Sims, and Robert Davis look to be the wide receivers being kept. Let's go to this one. Tight end J.P. Holtz. Um, he was released. So, I mean, it's, I don't want to celebrate somebody being released, but that indicates good news that Jordan Reed should be on track for week one. He's going through concussion protocol right now, but it sounds like that J.P. Holtz release is a good indication that Trent Williams should be straight for week one. That's basically what I'm trying to say there. Um, also, let me talk about this. My boy, one of my favorite players on the team, man. I'm so glad that he's going to make the cut. Outside linebacker Casanova McKenzie is on track to be ready for week one. He's also going through concussion protocol. Hold up. I'll be right back. I don't think there's anybody else in the house that can answer the door, back.
there's somebody coming to tell us something, stick something on our wall. Oh yeah, nah. Nah, I don't want nothing. Nah, I don't want nothing you selling, sir. I'm glad he went ahead and dipped. Brody barked. I think it scared him. Hey, Brody, bro. Keep, keep them off all yard, bro. All right, let's get back. To, I'm trying to see what y'all trying to say. Let me get back to my list, though. Um, Sims dropped quite a few balls. Yeah. Oh, what's up, MFMC? What's good? I actually said it kind of quick that time. I'm proud of myself. But, um, yeah, Cam Sims. I mean, it wasn't a terrible game, but I, I can see why, like, the way Steven Sims show, If Steven Sims didn't show out the way he did then Cam Sims probably would have made the team. But but Steven Sims performed so well, and Cam Sims had an off day. It wasn't terrible, but, you know, it just wasn't like I really need to make this team type of day. So Cam Sims got cut. Reed better not be hurt this year. Hey, man, that's my boy, but I personally would not pick him up in a fantasy league because when he's in the game, he's dynamic, dependable, all of that. But him playing 16 games, boy, I, whew, I can't trust it. I don't see what Gruden sees in Byron Marshall. He's the reason Alex Smith's career possibly over, missing that block. Yeah, bro, his pass blocking is tragic. And there's no excuse, too, because Chris, um, Chris Thompson is really small, and he pass blocks very well. So size isn't an issue. It's just technique and being willing to do it, knowing how to do it and, and being willing to do it correctly. So there's no, I, don't, I don't exactly get the Byron Marshall hype as far as pass protection goes, especially. I, I, I don't see it either. Um, let me see. But, yeah, it is Byron Marshall's fault, pretty much. <laughs> Alex Smith is in the predicament he's in. All right, let me get to this one. Oh, before I skip Casanova McKenzie, the reason I'm so hype about that is because he's, like, the only person on our roster, really, that's, like, a junior galette type of pass rusher. He's, like, a speedy, bendy type pass rusher. Ryan Kerrigan and Montez Sweat beat people with strength and technique. Junior, um, oh, my fault. Casanova McKenzie is a cheap, cheaper version of Junior Gallette. And you can see in preseason and summer last year, especially that uh, Buccaneers game, when we were still winning games and our team still looked pretty good, even though we were already starting to lose some players. Um, you can see that he has that speed around the edge to get to a quarterback before a tackle can even set up right. So we need that. That's a good dynamic switch up from Montez Sweat and Ryan Kerrigan. A Von Miller type mode. He's not as good as Von Miller, but you know we just need something like that, something to change up the pace. Because Montez Sweat and Ryan and, and uh, Ryan Kerrigan aren't that type, so it's nice to have a separate person like that. Also, he's passionate. He really wants to play. I mean, he's gonna play his heart out. So I'm I'm very happy for him that he looks to be on track to be ready for Week One. But it's gonna be him. It's gonna and Ryan Anderson actually looked better this summer than he's ever looked on this team, like considerably better. So that's good news. And then we have Montez Sweat and Ryan Kerrigan as our outside linebackers. Uh, let me get to this. Oh, let me see. Who's the one player you think makes the 53 that is a sleeper for this team? Well, Sean Wilson is <laughs> that's as sleep as it gets for me. Ah, who I didn't expect that. But as like a, a sleeper, as in like who will produce the most. I'm telling y'all, bro, stop sleeping on my boy Robert Davis. If he can, if he can stay healthy, if he can stay healthy, Robert Davis is gonna be a big playmaker. Out of Georgia State, you already know how that goes. So we'll see, bro. I'm telling Robert Davis is my pick, the sleeper to make the team that might actually have a real impact. Also, I mean, of course, Casanova McKenzie, if he stays healthy, the league will know his name eventually. Plus, it's a catchy name anyway. It's unique. Um, why didn't they play McLaurin during the preseason? Oh, what's good, Dominique? Um, he was hurt, kinda, and it felt like it wasn't really worth it. The people they played a lot in preseason, other than the third game, of course, against the Falcons, where the starters really played. Uh, the other people were really out there just getting a chance to show them, to prove themselves. That's why Samaje got brought out. Samaje Piran, who I'm about to talk about, who got cut, was brought out like the last four minutes of the fourth preseason game, and those are fringe roster players those are fringe 53 man roster players going out there having a chance to prove themselves so the fact that he was playing those last four minutes pretty much you know foreshadowed him being cut and terry mclaurin is guaranteed to make the team he's he's already going we already know minute bare minimum he's going to be a great special teams contributor he can return he's great on coverage one of the best in the entire draft that he was just drafted out of 2019 but then he's also showing that he's one of the most talented receivers on our team during training camp. Landon Collins and Jay Gruden 
Well, Landon Collins specifically said it was hardest to guard to cover Terry McLaurin and Jordan Reed out of the entire team. And then Jay Gruden also has some high praise for him, too. So pretty much, he's guaranteed to make the roster. He's probably starting. They didn't want to risk him getting even more hurt than he already was. If it was like week one, I don't the injury that he the type of injuries he had, he probably would have played through it. But since it was preseason, they didn't want to risk it, so they let just Terry McLaurin sit. So to answer to the answer your question, why Terry McLaurin did not play in preseason, that's pretty much why. It's somebody else, bro. Bro, who you mad at? Uh, let me see. Let me see what else. Ooh, I'm I'm behind. Um, hopefully Norman steps up his game this year and lives up to his contract. Bro, I don't think he'll ever live up to his contract because his is, he has a fat contract. That man is eating. But I do feel like he will have a great year. We already know he's a turnover machine fumble-wise. He's always trying to poke the ball out. I think he leads DBs in forced, turn, forced fumbles in the past, like, what, three years? And it's, like, by a wide margin, too. Like, he's up here, everybody else is down here, and then it goes. But I, hopefully his coverage is better. He, he gets more interceptions. And, yeah, he needs to play up to – at least try to play up to his contract. I mean, the Redskins are likely to release him after this year because I think he has another year. I think he has two years on his contract, 2019 and 2020. And it's more than likely the Redskins, especially if Fabian Moreau, Jimmy Moreland, all of them step up, or we might draft a corner. We might release Josh Norman to get rid of all of that cap space. He's Get some more cap space for all of that money he's taking up. So he, I'm pretty sure he'll stay throughout the 2019, especially if he's having a good year. 2020, though, it's looking a little iffy. So he better play his tail off if he wants to stay on the team. And it's going to be, with his age, he's like in mid-30s, it's going to be hard for him to get another contract. So he knows this is his year. Like this, 2019 is his year to, to eat. Like he, he has to perform well this year. He has to perform better than he's performed any of the years he's played for us this year if he hopes to get another contract from us or another team. He's got to really prove his worth this year. Even though he, I think he has two years left on his contract, but it's likely that he will be released after the 2019 season. And they, we might just eat some of that dead cap that comes with it. Um, Let's see. McKenzie can do some things for the team. I agree. What's, first of all, what's up, Mark? What's good? How you been? But, yeah, I agree. Casanova McKenzie, highlight the name. If you don't know the name, you're going to learn it. I'm telling you. McKenzie's going to be that dude. Um, Haha, Gruden don't even know Casanova McKenzie, or is it McKenzie Casanova? Does he really? What, he messed it up in, like, a press conference or something? That's funny. I didn't even know that. Um, Rick, what's up, Rick? Hi, Rico. How did Steven Sims make the? Yes, Steven Sims made the cut. Hold on, let me scroll up for you. Steven Sims and Robert Davis. I'm gonna highlight it. Both made the 53 man roster. Cam Sims got cut though. Cam Sims got released as a result. Cam Sims was released. Josh Doxson will be traded. By 4 p.m., if he's not, he will be released also. So my J.P. Ryan was released. J.P. Holtz, the tight end, was released, which means Jordan Reed should be healthy. Casanova McKenzie should be healthy for week one. Just a quick recap. Um, Brody tripping. <laughs> I don't know who he mad at. There was just somebody I went downstairs to see. Somebody was trying to sell us something. He probably put something on our mailbox, and I'm about to get it off. My mom going to be mad. Um, I hate when they do that. They come to the door, and then if you if they don't get in touch with you, they just put like something on your mailbox, stick it on it. Then you then you got a mark on your mailbox when you take it off. It's so petty. Um, Brody Mad P Ryan got cut, and Byron didn't. <laughs> I don't know how B how uh, Byron Marshall made the roster, but that's a little weird. Is that another person at the door? If that's not Lyric, I'm gonna have to swing on somebody. If it's not somebody, that just don't. Have All right, I'm sorry, y'all. What's good? Let me see me get back. Uh, Rico, thanks for the stream. What's good, Redskins Millennial? Appreciate you pulling up. Glad to see P-Ron going. I, I am too, bro. That, those preseason carries were really just, why is he here type thing. 
I'm glad the Redskins are learning to own up to their mistakes. They drafted him fourth round. They kept holding on to him, trying to make it look like they're smart, and he just needs time to develop. But sometimes you make a mistake, release him. Just like Trey Aki. I don't know what's going on with that. <sighs> yeah, he's done that two to three times in press conferences. Really? I didn't even know. I don't really watch the press conferences like that. I just deep dive on Twitter and Google and all that to figure out the most important parts of the press conference, but I don't. Probably should start watching the press conferences for real. Um, I would have kept Donald Parham now. Oh, man, Donald Parham right here. I put an explanation mark be um, behind his name, and I have it highlighted right there right now for y'all. That was my boy. I really was rooting for him to make the team because he's a great developmental pro um, project. But he was an undrafted free agent. He was with two other teams since the draft before us, so he more than likely will clear waivers, and we can pick him up on the uh, practice squad probably. We'll see, though. He probably will make the practice squad. I don't think people are fighting for Donald Parham right now, so that's probably why. Wonder if they will try to – oh, no, Brian – oh, you said will they keep him on practice squad. Okay, yeah, because Brian Quick got cut. But I'm about to get to all that. I'm still scrolling down. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, you know, talking back with y'all. <laughs> I'm here more so for the chat than the actual news. I can get to the news when nobody's talking in the chat. But we about to get to the news. Let's see. Bryce Love, the running back phenom from Stanford, the one that had 2,000 yards rushing like two years ago. He um, He's technically making a team. He will be on non-football injury list. It's pretty much like the pup list. Um, non-football injury can be like if you got in a car accident or something. Or it can be an injury that he sustained from college, which is his case, that carried on to the NFL. So he's not on IR. He's on the NFI. He'll be eligible to return week eight. But also, I've heard that Jay Gruden said that he may just redshirt the first year. So he may just remain on that list until 2020, and we'll have to wait for him to get unwrapped in 2020. Um, Let's see what's going on. I don't even know what you tried to say, Michael. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. All right. Um, oh, something important to note. Out of the two drafts, 2015 and 2016, that Scott McClellan ran, only two of the 17 players drafted remain on the roster after we officially cut Samaj P. Ryan and Josh Doxson, or trade Josh Doxson or whatever. That's Brandon Sheriff and Matt Ioannidis. And then really one of them doesn't count because Jay Gruden is the one who really pushed hard for Ioannidis. He was the one beating on the table. We must draft this guy. So really, I mean, I'm going to give it to Scott McClellan because at the end of the day, he drafted him. But only two players from those two drafts remain on this roster. That's Brandon Sheriff, who we need to extend, and Matt Ioannidis, who, who we already extended. Um, if you want to see the future wide receiver catch ABC in 90 minutes, Rug, Smith, Judy, Mechie, Waddle, and Shea. Hey, you got a point, bro. Those are some receivers, boy. The Alabama got them receivers. Clemson does, too. There's a few of them out there, too. Seahawks finesse the, the hell out of the, te the Texans for Clowney. I wish the Skins were willing to give up Trent. As much as I love Trent, if he doesn't want to play for us, we have to get something for him. Completely agree. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to that note right now. I'm going to highlight it. Bruce Allen folded. The Seahawks got Jadavion Clowney, all-pro potential edge rusher, um, for a 2023rd round pick, peanuts almost, and just Bracavius Mingo and Jacob Martin. We could have put together a better package than that. I guess Bruce Allen was just being petty, um, because that looks like we didn't even need to give up Trent. We could have done like a, a third round pick and two players or just a second round pick and they would have gave us Jadavion Clowney. So, Bruce Allen, you folded on that one. That that That's just a shame right there. All right, so I already went through some of the most important news. Oh, also some more important news. It, I put it in the other news section though. Oh, let me see what Christian said. Wonder if Sheriff not getting re-signed is because of, he's a Scott McClellan pick. Shame on Bruce Allen if that's true. Now, actually, I think it's a numbers game because there's a new, I think it's called a CBA or something like that, where the, you know, with the, um, the, the TV, um, the television channels, all of them um, rework their contracts with the NFL. So the cap space is, is going to spike in like two years or something. And I think Brandon Sheriff may be willing to take a franchise tag, play the rest of this contract, take a franchise tag next year, 
make a lot of money and then wait till that cap space just skyrockets and get like a huge market setting deal from us that year that will be long term i think that's what brandon sheriff is doing i think that's why he's waiting so we don't need the super where it would be nice if we extended brandon sheriff this year it would be very team friendly and that's what i would prefer but he's more than likely waiting till the new cap space happens and he can um and he can really cash in for a long-term deal because the cap space is going to spike more than it has in a few years. It's going to be a huge jump. Uh, hey, I appreciate that, Mark. For the t hey, man, everybody be like Mark. Everybody be like Mark. Matter of fact, everybody be like Mark. Every be everybody be like Tommy Walker. Everybody be like Scotty. And everybody be like JDC Clark. Make sure y'all take note. These are outstanding individuals. Everybody do what they're doing. All right, let's see. Um, what I really want to talk about, too, Dolphins inside linebacker Kiko Alonso. Very good inside linebacker. Just like the Josh Doxson situation for us, if the Dolphins can't find a trade partner for him, they will just release him. And I feel like the, if he gets released, the Redskins need to get on that immediately. I feel like our inside linebacker group is, like, pretty good right now. Like, they, you know, it's solid, but it definitely will be the biggest weakness. Well, I'm not going to say weakness. Not the biggest weakness. It will be the smallest strength, I would say. The least strong position group of our defense. Our DBs are going to be pretty good to really good. That's the range. Our defensive line is going to be great. Outside linebackers will be great. And it's just the inside linebackers that may, uh, I won't say hold us back, but they're just not dynamic, especially without Ruben Foster. John Bostic is better than I thought he was going to be from what I've seen in the preseason, especially that third game where it was starters against starters against the Falcons in Atlanta. But, uh, and Ruben Foster will be back next year. Hopefully he can stay healthy. Sean Deion Hamilton's pretty good, and Cole, who, but he also needs to stay healthy. And Cole Holcomb has a lot of potential. But if we can go get Kiko Alonso right now, especially on a team-friendly deal, that will eat, that will change our defense dramatically. Not saying that he's that good, but he'll sew up the last little bit of weakness that we truly have on our defense. So, I, hey, man, if we can get that done, if the, if, if the Dolphins do not trade him, he gets released. Bruce, Bruce Allen needs to get on that immediately. He needs to be... He needs to go ahead and have the Dolphins number inputted on his phone at 358 and get ready to hit send at 4 p.m. Or Kiko Alonso's number. That needs to be done. Also, not sure if y'all know, but Sewer Cravens was released from the... Oh, I said the Dolphins. He was released from the Broncos, I think, either last night or earlier today. And the fifth round pick that we gained from trading him to the Broncos was used for Tim Settle. So it looks like we won that trade. Sewell Cravens has been released from the Broncos. Not necessarily, not necessarily saying even though he's been bad-mouthing our team that I was rooting for him to be released, but I'm just letting y'all know as Redskins Nation that Sewell Cravens was released in the fifth-round pick that we got for trading them away. We got Tim Settle, which isn't really that bad because what we drafted him in the second, third, or fourth round. One of those, one of them, you know, upper mid-round picks maybe. When did we get him, like the second round? But either way, Tim Settle is a really good player, and he would start on most defensive lines in the NFL. So now when I look at it like that, we pretty much drafted Tim Settle with a second-round pick, third-round, whatever, whenever we got Sewell Cravens, and that's not too bad. It doesn't look anywhere near as bad as it used to look. Keeping my fingers crossed that Cam Sims can clear waivers and we can stash him on our practice squad. I agree. Please, man. That's what, that's what I'm saying. I got this right here. These are the notable names that I hope the Redskins bring back on the practice squad. I have J.P. Holtz, tight end, wide receiver Cam Sims, please Cam Sims, defensive lineman Ryan B. I mean, the, have y'all seen the way Ryan B. is built and how much passion he was playing with that last preseason games to make the roster? I feel bad for him that he didn't make the roster, but he played his tail off. He was hustling. He was um even, even when plays got past him or behind him or whatever, he would chase him down. I mean, he was playing his tail off, and then he's just like an imposing present. He's like the biggest guy on roster, well, on our 90-man roster, other than Donald Parham, who's built like a small forward. That man's almost as big as LeBron James. So I really hope we can get him back. He has a lot of potential there. Craig Reynolds, the running back, um, I, he didn't look too, too good the fourth preseason game, but he showed a little something-something the other preseason games. I hope we can bring him back. 
Adonis Alexander, who I still don't understand why the Redskins haven't tried him at safety because he's clearly not fast enough to play corner. His size is imposing. What is he, like 6'3", long arms? And it sounds cool, in theory, for him to play corner if he had the speed to do it, but he doesn't. So I don't know why we haven't tried him at safety yet, especially for depth. But then there's Jeremy Reeves also who plays safety, who was actually played well in the preseason throughout training camp and preseason. But I'm assuming the fact that he got cut, and I hope we bring him back on practice squad, which is my main point, though. But as a side note, him getting cut pretty much assures that Troy Apke is making a team. Whether that be a good thing or a bad thing, I still haven't seen anything from him that shows he deserves to make the team at this point. But with all of that athleticism, speed, and potential, I, it looks like the Redskins are still invested in seeing what he can do, and they don't want to let him hit the market and possibly get picked up on waivers. I don't think Troy Apke would make the practice squad. Jeremy, Re Jeremy Reeves probably will. And I feel like that's why the Redskins released Jeremy Reeves and kept Troy Apke. Um, It's a risk. They're gambling. But I think this way we'll more than likely be able to retain both if we release Jeremy Reeves rather than releasing Troy Apke. All right. So, J.P. Finley just tweeted that it looks like the 52-man out of the 53-man roster are pretty much locks, and it's basically just to see if Jordan Brailford makes it in as a fifth outside linebacker. That's interesting. Um, do you think we have any chances of getting Trent Williams? Man, if I was plugged in like that, I could give you a real answer. But right now, from what I'm hearing from people that's close to him, like D'Angelo Hall, that actually like have his number and hit him up, and they're not like just reporters, and he has like a shell and doesn't give them real answers. Uh, it looks like he's he's not coming back week one. That's that looks like for sure at this point. Whether he's coming back at all is a whole nother question. And if 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 it's really looking as bleak as it looks, if it's looking as dark as it looks, I think the Redskins need to go ahead and trade him for at least a first round pick and something I don't know. But it's looking it's looking the Trent Williams situation is looking dark, and I'm very surprised the Redskins haven't taken advantage of like trade partners like Jadavion was out there getting dangled for a third round pick and some peanuts. I'm I'm so I'm just shocked about that one. But Laramie Tunsil is still an option out there from the Dolphins. Um let me see who else. There's also some wide receivers out there we might be able to pick up. But I really want like a Laramie Tunsil. Young high potential great left tackle to replace Trent Williams. He's not a Trent Williams, but he's young. He's the best suitable replacement for him that's possibly out there on the market right now. And we might be able to get a draft pick back also. We'll, we'll see, though. We'll see how that goes. Um, does a new guard take Flowers' place? You talking about Wes Martin? I hope. Because Wes Martin, the only thing he's good at run blocking. If he has to pass block, he ha if he has to work in space, if he has to um, – anything that requires him to move his feet a lot, it's dark. It's, it's just not going to work. So, I hope Wes Martin does earn that starting spot. They said as of right now, Eric Flowers is starting, but I really hope Wes Martin shows something within this next week to take over. Because he didn't necessarily look great in the preseason also, but he's a rookie. Hopefully, he develops. Um, hopefully, Martin will before the fifth. Oh, yeah. See, thank you. Thank you, Redskins Millennial. Appreciate that. That's basically my answer. Ho as soon as possible. Hopefully, like you said, by the time, like, a Dwayne Haskins will probably end up playing. Um, yeah, Trent is done, but it's personal with Snyder. He has paid Trent a lot of money, so it's either skins or bust. I don't expect a trade at all. I'm not surprised either. That that sounds about right. And first of all, what's up, Ivory? But, yeah, that sounds about right, man. It sounds like it's, it's, it's a petty thing now. It's not just about money or anything. Right now, the Redskins are holding on to him, and they're like, you're either going to play for us or nobody at all. That's what it sounds like. And I, who I, I don't like when it comes to trying to be successful. People being petty. I don't, I don't like emotions being tied in. Um, what's up, Delonte and Cam Sims? Bro, it's crazy that he got released. But hopefully he clears waivers and makes it to our practice squad. But at the end of the day, he didn't look too good that fourth preseason game. Even though he looked very good training camp and preseason games one through three. But that fourth preseason games and. Steven Sims showed out that game. He went crazy that four preseason games. Preseason game. And Robert Davis showed out 
all training camp and preseason games one through three. So I can see. And then he had Robert Davis. I don't think people understand how athletic he is and how high his potential is. So the Redskins are banking on that. Plus, Steven Sims also is good on special teams, as you saw in that one return that he had against um, the, uh, the Ravens in that fourth preseason game just a few days ago, Thursday. So he's a good he's a good special teams option, but he's also a really good backup slot option for Trey Quinn, who we're not sure is 100 percent yet. So that there's multiple factors to why Steven Sims made the team over Cam Sims. Also, did y'all know that Maurice Harris got uh, released by the Patriots a few days ago? I'm not sure people knew that. Let me write that down. I'm not sure if people knew that. Um, Maurice Harris released by Patriots. So if y'all are just wondering what happened with Maurice Harris, he was released by the Patriots a few days ago. Uh, we should have took the Pats first rounder for Trent. That's a great offer. The only reason I'm just kind of against that is just I feel like we should be able to get more. Like I, like I would take that, but I wouldn't be like ecstatic about it because the Patriots first round is almost a second. I feel like we can possibly do maybe a three team trade, whatever we got to do to maybe get somebody like the Jets first rounder involved in. If we could do that, that's a huge upgrade because the Jets first rounder might be a top 10. And to be able to have two first round picks in this ridiculously deep and talented draft that's coming up 2020 that would be excellent i don't i keep emphasizing y'all y'all better pay attention to this college season there's a lot of this is going to be a draft to remember next year this next draft is going to be crazy i'm not saying it's going to be like the julio draft when everybody was in it but it's going to be it's going to be a really good draft this year so to have two first round picks means a lot Especially since we don't have our seconds because we traded them to the Colts to get to trade back up into the first to get Montez Sweat. Um, true, separate the business from the emotions if you can. Bro, I, I just never understand Petty, especially when it comes to anything with money. I just never understood it. Uh, I think we should pick up like AJ Green or trade for a wide receiver for Trent says he ain't. That's what I, I feel like we should either get a Trent Williams replacement or a dynamic wide receiver. We can either trade for somebody like Stefan Diggs, but that will require us to probably give up a first round pick. Actually, more than likely will require us to give up a first round pick. Or we could try to get somebody like an AJ Green who is injury prone and probably get him for something a little bit cheaper. So, I, yeah, I agree. I prefer a Laramie Tunsil, but somebody like an AJ Green or Mike Evans or the like would also be a great option too. Or a high first round pick. It don't even have to be like top 10, but just. I prefer not like a deep first round like the Patriots where it's basically just a high second. Um, if the Dolphins offer the first round pick, I think we should take that because the Dolphins are going to be trash this year. I agree. If we can get a first round pick from the Dolphins this year, oh, we yeah, we got to pull the trigger. We got to pull the trigger. That's easy. I don't care what other offers are doing out there. Uh, we have to take that. I will take that over Laramie Tunsil. Uh, that that's the most ideal pick right there the jets probably will be better than the dolphins if we can get the dolphins first round pick we got to do it we have to pull that trigger if that's even an option i'll make the call myself um let's see what else we said i love aj green but injuries robbed him of potential hall of fame career oh man how you think i feel i'm a georgia fan i'm gonna be watching that game at 7 p.m just to let y'all know but um yeah i whew, man that aj green situation is crazy that high school, I was just talking to my friends about that high school recruiting year. Everybody was in that high school year, coming from high school, going to college. That was a crazy year. And then the draft, too, from college to the NFL, that that class was crazy. But like I said, we might be able to get him for cheaper than a first-round pick just off of the fact that he's so injury-prone. And he's hurt this year. He won't even be able to play till what, like week? eight this year something like that he has a pretty serious injury because they played on that weird turf like a weird stadium for something i think it was in another country or somewhere or it, it definitely wasn't in cincinnati um let's see wide receiver is sick let's see why did we keep doxing over cam sims i love robert davis he's explosive and fast i love steven sims ahead of trey quinn it's a lot he's shifty and quick quinn is neither and always hurt Oh no, we're um we're not keeping Doxon. We're not. He's gone. We're holding on to him right now to see if we can trade him before the 4 p.m. Eastern 
time deadline, which is an hour and 42 minutes. But we, um, he's getting, if we don't do that, he's getting released. So basically, Doxon is not on the team. Right now, let me highlight it for you. Paul Richardson. Y'all can read the note. I have these notes up for y'all, too. Y'all can read them. I hope it's not too small for y'all to see. I just wanted to make sure, you know, I had everything, all the most important things that's being talked about there, especially if you're coming in and out the stream, you just got here or whatever. So those are the wide receivers we're going into the season with. Josh Doxon is not one of them. We are looking for suitable trade partners, but we have until 4 p.m. to do so, which is, like I said, an hour and 41 minutes. If we can't find a suitable trade partner, he will be released. They've already said it. Which kind of messes up our trade value for him, our, our leverage, because if they know we're just going to release him anyway, why trade for him now? I highly doubt there's a line of people trying to trying to trade for Josh Doxon right now. So more than likely, he will just end up getting released. And I, I do think um, Laramie Tunsil is good. I do. I personally feel like, I mean, he's definitely a better option than Donald Penn right now. Sorry for the for whatever I'm doing. Um, He's not Trent Williams, but he's way younger. He has a lot of potential, and he's definitely better than Donald Penn. Donald Penn is solid. He's pretty solid, but he's up there in age. And Laramie Tunsil will be a good long-term option, especially if we don't want to draft a tackle in this draft. Like an Andrew Thompson, Thomas, like my boy from Georgia, you know what I'm saying? The best tackle coming out the draft. He might not make it to our pick. So if we can get Laramie Tunsil and some draft picks, like some extra something, something, not just Laramie Tunsil for Trent Williams straight up, of course. I'll do like Trent Williams for Laramie Tunsil and maybe like a third or something like that. Then I'll definitely take that. Oh, thank you for subscribing, top tier dip. Streamlabs already announced it in the chat, but I'm going to, you know, make sure I tell you here. Trying to get the 3K subscribers before my birthday, November 30th, so I'm about to go stupid. For all y'all that don't know, because I see that we have a lot more people in here than we had earlier when I was talking about it, I'm going to have a setup to where I can take calls. So I'm going to be live streaming during the games. Y'all going to see my instant analysis, my instant reaction and all that. But then I'm going to end the stream and then shortly afterwards, I'm going to start live streams to review the game. And then that will allow y'all, I'm going to have it so where y'all can call in. The stream will be able to hear you. You'll be talking to me and all of that. We'll be able to talk over the stream. You can talk about whatever you want to. If you want to not necessarily cuss out Jay Gruden, but if he did something wrong and you want to let your peace be heard, you'll be able to call up and say that. So, I'm, you know, I just want to be able to allow my Street Scores family to also let their voices be heard too. Not just in the chat, but you'll actually be able to call up to the, um, I think it's the way I set it up. I'm, I'm going to have it ready, try to have it ready by week one to where we can actually converse. And I'm not just staring into the chat. Well, you'll be able to talk back and forth with me. We'll be able to debate. We disagree, agree, or whatever. Let you be able to say your piece. Shout out whoever you want to shout out. Say, like, Jonathan Allen gets two sacks. You'll be able to talk about that. Say shouts out to John, Jonathan Allen for putting on the day. All of that type of stuff. So I'm going to I'm gonna have a setup to where everybody in the stream, I'm going to take turns calling in, all that type of stuff. Um, I would like to see us get like a T.Y. Hilton. He need to get out of that coat. They holding him back. I agree. Hey, man, if they're, if they're about to go into a rebuild after Andrew Luck decided to not play anymore and they're trying to get rid of people like T.Y. Hilton, I say we pull the trigger on that too. I like that. I'm not, I haven't heard anybody say T.Y. Hilton, so that's a unique uh, – that's a unique uh, possibility right there, Delonte. That's a new one. I like that. It's going to be either release or trial. Oh, yeah, appreciate that, Redskins Millennium. Appreciate that. Ar you said, How you pronounce that? Armand? I'm going to call you Mr. Rice. Appreciate that, man. I'm trying, bruh. Salute to you two for pulling up. Um, Dorian. First of all, what's up, Dorian? Um, we really need to keep an eye on Cam Sims. I hope, I really, really hope we can bring him back on practice squad. I really do. Really hope we can find a way to bring him back on practice squad. Who? Cause that's that's a man with his size, speed, and how good he looked during the training camp in the first three preseason games. It's crazy that he got cut, and I'm pretty sure there's another team out there looking to get him. So um, okay, let me um, I'm gonna set a timer. Mom, I'm not sure if you if you're in the stream, but yes, I'm gonna set a timer in about five minutes or ten minutes. Uh, is Donald Penn ahead of Jerron on depth chart? Yes, definitely. Jerron Christian is not ready. 
He looks better than last year, which isn't saying much because last year he was terrible. But Donald Penn is actually pretty solid. He's definitely going to be better than Eric Flowers. So I'm glad we picked up Donald Penn. That was a night. Him and Dominic Rogers Cromarty are very low key, great signings. They're not necessarily great players, but for the cheap contracts they're on and how late we got them, those are really good pickups. And John Bostic also. So yeah, Donald Penn is going to be straight. He's not going to be Trent Williams, but he's going to be good. Now, Trent Williams' athleticism is on another level. So, running screens on his side, it won't be as effective. We probably won't run him as often with Donald Penn over there. But Donald Penn definitely holds his own. He definitely will protect uh, Case Keenum and then Dwayne Haskins' um, blind spot well. Especially better than Jerron Christian. Or anybody else we have on roster. Um, who do you like more for covering the slot? Moreland or Moreau? Moreland. Moreau has so many traits that just scream outside corner. Only reason he's not at outside corner is because Quentin Dunbar and Josh Norman are starting. I do not like Fabian Moreau in the slot. He is a press outside corner. He's literally like an Xavier Rhodes type build. He just isn't as good as Xavier Rhodes yet, but he definitely has the potential to be. He might be the re replacement for Josh Norman if we let him go after the 2019 season, if he doesn't live up to that contract or at least get close to it. Because it's impossible for him to live up to those numbers. Those numbers are crazy. Unless he has an all-pro year, those numbers are just in inexcusable. So, I like Mar um, my boy, Jimmy Moreland, way more in the slot. That's literally what he's built for to do. Um, all of his traits. He's shifty. His hips are fluid. He's very fast, very reactive. Ball hawk. I like him way more in the slot to handle the smaller, little, quickie, shifty receivers than a Fabian Moreau. Fabian Moreau needs to be guarding the Julios, the Mike Evans. And I'm not saying he's great at it, but that's what his his traits, his build, his um, attributes um, point towards. That's what he's adapted. That's what he's built to do. So I like Jimmy Moreland far more in the slot. I want him starting in the slot, especially since Fabian Moreau is some type of hurt right now. He's not 100% healthy. He's not starting week one. Pretty sure Jimmy Moreland starting week one anyway. Um... I would be happy if we got DeAndre Hopkins for Trent. Man, I'll tell you this stream. I'm going to throw everything around this room if I saw that notification pop up. But I highly doubt that's going to happen. D-Hop is too valuable. D-Hop is entirely too valuable. But if we can pull off D-Hop for Trent Williams, I'm throwing furniture. Um, this stream, will be, it will be canceled. Um, let's see. We would never get hoops for Hops. For, yeah, exactly, Alex. Man, I, that would never happen. I appreciate that, Davon. Okay, appreciate you for subscribing. It didn't tell me that you did, and I'm still at 2329, but I'm going to take your word for it. Appreciate the subscription. Um, I hope Cam Sims makes the practice squad. I agree wholeheartedly. This is my list of people that I hope make the practice squad that were released. And Cam Sims is the most notable one. Let me put an explanation mark next to his name. Cam Sims, I really, really hope he makes the practice squad. I doubt it. It's looking a little iffy. Pretty sure there's teams out there looking for him, but we'll see. I know. Let me be happy with my wit. <laughs> yeah, Juarez, bro. I'm to A. Hey, it's not likely at all, but if it happens, bro, you'll get credit for it. You'll be the first person I heard say it. I think I might have seen somebody say it on Twitter, but in this stream, you're the first person to say it. And as crazy as it may sound, you'll get credit for putting that together if it happens. On your calls, will it be via Skype or internet calls like WhatsApp? As I ain't making no international. <laughs> it's like through Google. I got to see. I'm going to figure out how to set it up. I haven't super looked into it yet. I was looking. I was trying to figure out how to set up other stuff on the stream. Like I have a way to. Uh, hold on. Let me let me hold and hit. Let me hit y'all with this real quick. Hold on. Let me see if I can do this to y'all. This is something I figured out how to do. I don't. I don't really see the point of it. But I can change myself to look a certain way. That's something I figured out how to do last night. Um, my priorities are out of whack because I do need to figure out the call system faster than I figure out whatever I just figured out like this with a little filter. But I will um, get the call system figured out. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it. I will let y'all know and everything. But I got that. I can change the way I look on camera. Of course, I got my noises. I'm going to be watching the game. So when somebody mess up, and when somebody does well... All of that type of stuff. Like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make this stream great. I got Brody at the top left, even though the video is a little altered weird. But, you know, we're going to get to that. Um, 
Yeah, Cam Sims has so much un untapped potential. Him and Robert Davis definitely have the most potential out of all the wide receivers on our team. Definitely, as far as, like, their build, how athletic they are, fast, speed, hands, all of that. Route running, they, yo, they got it. Potential-wise, it's all of them. The ceiling is, you can't even see it in, in the little box I'm in right now. Oh, what's up, Marcus? What's good? He, bro, it's been a minute, bro. Excellent idea to go live for the 53 man count. Hey, bro, I'm on it, bro. I just got done cutting. I went straight from cutting grass to writing my notes that you see on the screen, the stream, and I wasn't playing. I had to make sure I got on this. Um, big ups to God that P. Ryan was released. <laughs> bro, y'all really serious. Y'all was praying on P. Ryan. Y'all couldn't handle it no more. Now if I can only get Capri Bibbs back. Where is Capri Bibbs? Because last time I heard, I think he was in Green Bay, but then he got released. So is he just out there? Did somebody pick him up? Because I do miss Capri Bibbs, too. Oh, what's up, Booba? It was Booba, right? I remember you told me how to pronounce it. I'm almost sure it was Booba. It was good, though. Uh, who do you think is the best case scenario for... What is the best case scenario for Redskins this season? I think best case is 11-5. If Dwayne Haskins starts sooner than we think, if he develops sooner than we think, the defense is as good as we think, not as great as we think it will be, if not better. And if the wide receivers are better than we hope, if the offensive line holds it down, or if we can make some fantastic trade, um, let me see. If we can pick up, like I said earlier, Kiko Alonso, for the, those of y'all who are late to the – well, not late to the stream, but if you just getting here you weren't here when I talked about it, inside linebacker Kiko Alonso will be released if he's not traded by 4 p.m. I think the Redskins need to get on that. Just think about it. This, this year, not, not even next year, after the draft for Ruben Foster coming back healthy – Whoever we draft in the first round, all of that. I'm talking about this year. Kiko Alonso with John Bostic. Then you got Sean Deion Hamilton, Josh Harvey Clemens. And then the rest of the defense is already ready. The defensive line outside linebackers are already dominant. Top five. Maybe the best in the league. Um, let me see. Hold on. Let me click on that. Let me see what we're talking about. So they're saying that the 52, yeah, 52 men of the 53-man roster are pretty much locked. And it's either going to be... Uh, last draft pick, Jordan Brailford, the outside linebacker who's hurt but has potential, taking that last spot, or it'll be Marcus Smith. But Sean Wilson is probably going to be on injured reserve, start the year out on injured reserve, so we'll probably keep him too or whatever. Um, Let me see. But yeah, to answer your question, Alex, first of all, what's up? I'm not sure if I said what's up to you earlier, if you were here earlier. Um, I feel like the Redskins' best case scenario is 11-5. I feel like our floor, excluding injuries, because injuries, I'm, and then I'm talking about drastic injuries, excluding Redskin-like injuries where we're the most hurt team in the, in the league by far. If we just only have normal injuries like a normal NFL franchise has, the, the average NFL franchise has, then I feel like our floor is 6-10. and 10. I feel like our ceiling is 11-5, and five, to be completely honest. And that's a wide range, but it's got to be – we got to see how good our inside linebackers are. We got to see if Jimmy Moreland is really ready to take that sliding, um, starting slot corner spot. We got to see if Monte Nicholson and Landon Collins pairing is really the truth. If Monte Nicholson is back into his 2017 bag, we got to see if Case Ke how many games Case Keenum is going to have to start because he's not good. He's not as good of a game manager as Alex Smith. He's also not as dynamic as Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins is just more mistake-prone right now. But when Dwayne Haskins takes over, is he going to be dynamic? Is the offensive line going to hold up? Can Darius Geis and Chris Thompson stay healthy? We already know what Adrian Peterson can do. Are the wide receivers going to step up, or at least a couple of them, are they going to stay healthy and step up? We just got – it's a lot of factors to it. But that's why I say 11-5, 6-10. Um, Steven Sims is a nice gem for the receiving core and special teams. Bro, I'm a hey, dynamic. I'm a dynamic player, bro. I can't wait to see what he does this year. I cannot believe we cut both jo JoJo, Wicker, and Ryan B. I cannot see B not getting picked up. He has so much upside. Hey, Marcus, I was just talking about him early. I was talking about him for like a full two minutes alone early. I really hope, again, he's in my list of people that I hope that I have highlighted that I hope we bring back on practice squad. But with the Ray Ryan, Ryan B is, I already spoke about him earlier. The way his build, I mean, he's the biggest guy on the team other than Donald Parham during training camp and preseason. He probably will get picked up before he makes it to our practice squad. 
Unless, see, I need Ryan B and Cam Sims on the practice squad. I, I completely agree. Um, Cam had some drops, but he wasn't. All, that's what I'm saying. He kind of had an off game. And Steven Sims did show out, but his game wasn't, like, terrible. But, hey, man, it, it's, it's a numbers game. Raiders low-key are attempting to holler at Sims. You talking about Cam Sims already? I didn't hear about that. That's crazy. All right, let me go ahead and start. Because I got some stuff to do. I might come back and stream later. But let me go ahead and start the stream timer. Where is that stream timer at? I have a. All right. So I have a stream timer out there. So I'm going to try to get to the chat and everything. I already talked about everything that needs to be talked about. I keep repeating a lot for the people who weren't here the whole time or whatever. Make sure y'all like and subscribe while you're here though. Because like I said, I'm going to be live streaming during every regular season game. I'm going to try to get some game previews out there. Like, before the game happens, comparing our players versus their players, our defensive line versus our opponent's defensive line, our wide receivers versus theirs, what happened last time we played them, all of that type of stuff. I'm going to try to do some game previews, especially for the bigger games in, like, the division rival type games. So, subscribe for content like that. I'm going to be live streaming during games, so you'll see my instant reaction. You can get in the chat, talk about stuff. We can laugh about what's going on during the game, all of that. I'm a, And then... Shortly after my live stream during the game, I'm going I'm to start up another live stream for an instant reaction. Y'all can pull up. I'm going to get the phone working. So if y'all want to call up and speak your piece, if you want to debate with me, debate with other people in the chat, if you want to yell at Jay Gruden for doing something wrong, whatever you want to do, if you want to shout out players, you can do that. You'll be able to call up during the regular season post game to speak your piece. We can debate, agree, disagree, whatever y'all want to do about it. Let me see what's going on. Let me try to catch up on the chat. Live and let die, James Bond. <laughs> Brody always, hey, man, Brody always doing his thing. I don't think Brody's in the room right now. He might, we closed the door, so it wouldn't be so many disturbances with people outside cutting grass and everything. This, that's why I was just cutting grass. I cut the whole backyard just now. And I had to hurry up and stream, so I didn't have time to change outfits. But we still getting, the, I think that we're still getting the yard done right now. Let me get on this grill. 12 and tw 12 and 4 deuces men keeping them check <laughs> keeping them in check bro i appreciate it mark go ahead and cook up some food man 12 and 4 that's what you got i like that that's optimistic i'd rather have brailford are oh, you talking about to make that last spot armand that's a bad i do like brailford i was watching his film like really in depth like a month ago that man has some potential to him i like brailford I want BJ Blunt on practice squad as well. Oh, that's a good point. Let me add him to the list. Appreciate that, Armand. Let me. Let me. I forgot that one. Matter of fact, because you said it, I'm going to make sure I put your name on it. Armand. Oh, I spelled, I spelled your name wrong. Let me put your name on it. Give you your credit, you feel me? But I, I'm a super format type of guy, so I got to make sure that, that that lines up right and all of that. Oh, y'all don't see it. Oh, I'm going to forgot. Hold on. Get rid of the countdown. Oh, is that going to restart? Oh, that restarted the countdown. All right, but Armand, just to show you, I, I put BJ Blunt on there. I'm highlighting it for you. That's your idea, and I agree, so I'm going to put that up there. All right, let me restart the countdown. I'm not going to change it again. We're going to go ahead and get this 10 minutes done, and I'm going to end the stream. Um, We should pick up Kenny Stills. Did Kenny Stills get released? Is he out there? And how good is Kenny Stills like that? Because I'm... I remember him having a couple of off years, but I mean he might be a good pickup though, depending on what he, what he, um, what contract he's looking for. Did he get released or something? Because I haven't heard anything about Kenny Stills. When it comes to the Dolphins, I've had my, my micro, um, my magnifying glass on Kiko Alonso and Laramie Tunsil. I haven't paid it. I didn't pay attention to anybody else. Need a real left guard ASAP. Who's available? Boy, I wish I could tell you. I hope Wes Martin develops sooner rather than later, because Eric Flowers is not necessarily it. Hell from the UK, loving your work, sir. Keep it up. HTTR. What's up, PRM? Appreciate the shout out, man. Appreciate it. I'm trying, bro. I'm keeping, I'm, hey, I'm on their neck this regular season, bro. I'm trying to get the 3K subscribers by my birthday, November 30th. That would make my year. That would be big time. Dakota Allen would be a sol solid pickup. I recognize that name. Who is Dakota Allen? I'm not even going to, I'm not going to, I'm never going to sit here and lie to y'all like I know everything on this stream. Who's Dakota Allen? I, the name ring a bell, but. Delonte, you're a hardworking YouTuber. I respect that a lot. Keep going. Appreciate it, man. Hey, this is my passion, bro. I love, bro. Redskins are, this has been my favorite team for life. I've been living in Atlanta forever. I consider myself from Atlanta, but I'm a diehard Redskins fan. 
And I love my Georgia Bulldogs, but if I had to pick between the two, I easily Redskins in a heartbeat. This is my team. I love reporting on them. I love looking this stuff up. I love surfing Twitter at 4 a.m. to get the early news before everybody else does. I, I read articles. I, I watch film. Film is my favorite part, especially my favorite part of football in general is watching high school recruits, it's watching their film, watching their huddle seeing how they develop in college, and then seeing how they develop in the NFL. That's, a, that's my favorite part of the whole aspect of football. So I'm big on the draft process and all of that and the recruiting and all of that. So, But my Redskins, man, can, you can't tell me nothing about them. I don't care if we haven't won a Super Bowl since I've been born. I don't, hey, man, I don't care about that. We about to get one sooner. We about to get, we'll get one sooner, soon enough. Who do you think would be our biggest game changer on either side of the ball? All right. Now, I do have to admit when I'm wrong because that boy Deron Payne is a serious problem. I think Deron Payne might be one of our biggest game changers, honestly. Jonathan Allen, I feel like, is going to eventually become an all-pro. But Deron Payne is going to be that guy where, like, opposing teams have to game plan for him. Like, they're going to have to double block him every down, which is going to make things so much easier for everybody else. So even though he might not have the stats to show it, he will make every Jonathan Allen's gonna have a better year because of because of him. Montez Sweat is gonna have a great rookie season because of him. Ryan Kerrigan's gonna have a great um another great year, double digit sack year because of Deron Payne. Man, Knight is gonna have a great year. Um, our linebackers are gonna look better. Our DBs are gonna look better because of Deron Payne. I feel like Deron Payne will have probably one of the biggest impacts on our defense. And also Landon Collins, bro. Y'all can't forget, buddy, bro. I mean, he's gonna be crazy. Offensively. I mean, it's kind of a cop-out, but when Dwayne Haskins start, I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a different feeling to this team, franchise, all of that. It's going to be different. He's going to be our biggest playmaker. But he's a quarterback, so that's by default. Other than him, I feel like Terry McLaurin and Darius Geis are going to dominate. I'm telling y'all, bro, just watch. That's Those are my picks. Um, but for defense, um, Deron Payne, Landon Collins, Monte Nicholson is going to have a big impact, too, I feel like. And Jimmy Moreland. It's hard, right? It's really hard. But if I had to choose one on each side, I feel like quarterback is too easy. So if I had to pick somebody besides quarterback, I'm going to say Darius Geis. Terry McLaurin, not far behind. If I had to pick defense, I'm going to say Deron Payne. But Jimmy Moreland, Jonathan Allen, Landon Collins, and Monte, and Monte Nicholson are not far behind from him either. Then, like I said, Deron Payne may not have the stats to show it, but I'm telling you, that's the guy – when people are doing film sessions the week before they play us, who they keep highlighting, the, the offensive coordinator, the head coach, everybody is going to keep saying Deron Payne's name in um, in their um, team meetings, in their film sessions. They're going to like, bro, you have to stop him. I th he's going to be a big point of emphasis for opposing offenses. I feel Jay's preseason was on. I ain't showed none of my plays mode. What's up, Joseph? And I completely agree. He was definitely throwing cupcake plays out there. He was not trying to do anything fancy. He didn't want any spies spying on us. He didn't want any of the teams we play this year, especially the NFC East opponents, especially the Cowboys, knowing what we plan on doing. Just throw some basic things out there. Give them some different looks so they can know what to do in certain situations. But don't throw out our fanciest tricks out there. I definitely agree. That's how, that's how you're supposed to do preseason. Um, Armand, I don't know what you tried to say. It says it was deleted. My boy C3PO in the back, Streamlabs, my little computer. That's not me doing that. That's my little computer I set up. My boy C3PO in the back, he stays on that. So you probably tried to post a link or something, and he got it out the paint. So just be careful with those. It, it doesn't mark anything against you, but I'm just letting y'all know. When y'all try to post a link or say certain things, C3PO in the back, I can't control him now. He's his own, he's his own man back there. He's just going to do what he do. Um, he he gets he gets them comments out the paint. We have the youngest wide receiver core in the league. I'm not surprised, but there's a lot of potential behind it. It's gonna have his hiccups. There's gonna be moments where their age shows, but at the very least, there's a lot of potential. And besides Paul Richardson, they're all on cheap contracts, so that's good too. Um, we need to get Stefan Dig. His brother wants him to be here, and one and he wants to as well. Oh, I agree. I agree. Stephon Diggs would be a great pickup. That's a really, really dynamic wide receiver. I would love to have him. And he's that's been a thing all summer and even somewhat of spring. Stephon Diggs to the Redskins. Trending on Twitter. You see his brother um, 
think he he played for Alabama or something like his brother tweeting about how much he wants um Stefan Diggs to be on the Redskins too. I mean it's just it was a lot of hype behind that. Nothing ever came through, but you'll never know, man. We got an hour and seventeen minutes, so we really see what's about to go down. Um Oh shoot. C three PO got my boy Armand out the paint for one second. You tell please refrain <laughs> Hey, you don't even have to say my bad because I don't care. It's just my C3PO. I might have to change it to where y'all can post links. It's just like it's automatically set up to not allow links and C3PO in the back not playing with y'all right now. So I'm probably just going to have to change that because I'm curious what link you're trying to send because, I mean, I don't I don't want y'all comments to just keep getting deleted. Um, I would like to see Sims play slot. Not a big fan of Quinn, but Sims can be that Crowder type of guy, big playmaker. Oh, yeah, we've seen that. Seen the way he caught that pass from Dwayne Haskins in the back of the end zone on Thursday. That was, bruh. And then his special teams of, um, potential, his return ability, he showed some of that against the Ravens on Thursday. Steve, Steven Sims in the slot is going to be crazy. If Trey Quinn is still hurt or he's not performing as well as we feel like he should be, Steven Sims is a great replacement. All of the offensive plays were vanilla on purpose. Exactly. I said cupcake. I meant vanilla. I, I keep saying cupcake. Cupcake is the way they you do your roster back in NCAA, EA, the EA game. The That's the best sports franchise. I can go on about that for an hour. They need to bring NCAA back. But cupcake, if you tried to create a team, you pick cupcake to create like the worst team. I kept saying that. It's vanilla. Thank you. Thank you, Armand. Dakota Allen was a former last chance U linebacker that was picked up by the LA Rams as an undrafted free agent. That's why I recognize his name. My Rams fan and my 49ers fan were just talking about him last night. Yeah, man. I, I, haven't re I don't really exactly know how well he is, like how good he is at what he does, but I mean, I'm curious. That's a, I, I'm interested. I'm about to go look him up after I stop the stream because I'm curious to see why you, why you suggested that. I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to go do my homework. Don't want none of these, the team's new players remind us of the old ones. Don't don't want don't want none of the team's new players remind us. Oh, okay, I agree. Yeah, I want a new fresh feeling too. I want fresh change. I want players that are committed, dynamic, fast, game changing. I I completely agree, Jonathan. First of all, what's up, Jonathan? I ain't say what's up to you. Um, and just to let y'all know the stream is ending in one minute. I may stream when I come back. From I gotta I gotta do you know got a lot to do and everything, but I might run the stream back up later on to do some more live analysis of everything but i got 40 seconds i'm gonna get to these questions though i feel like boston gonna be nasty people sleep on him but oh you mean jonathan uh you mean um john bostic is that what you're talking about oh yeah, yeah you corrected it already jo yeah john bostic performed way better in preseason than i thought he would I want to see Sims back out there running kick return and punt return. I agree. That's who I want starting as our returner. That I want I want to see Steven Sims out there. That's crazy too. When we say Sims now, with it's automatically Steven Sims and not Cam Sims now. That is crazy. I would have never imagined that three months ago. When we just say the last name Sims, no first name, we're talking about Stevens now. That is crazy. Um, bring back Cam Sims if Troy Quinn can't stay healthy. I agree on that. I do agree. I do not know how to pronounce your name. Six of six of Moy JB. What's up? What's happening? Um, Kenny Stills. Uh, somebody mentioned Kenny Stills earlier. That's interesting. I, I haven't paid attention to him. The people I want the most from the Dolphins roster, I want their first round draft pick the most because they're going to be pretty bad. Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Josh Rosen experiment is kind of crazy. Then I want Laramie Tunsil. And then I want Kiko Alonso under that. And then I might I might consider Kenny Stills. I'm going to have to look up what he did last year because I, I didn't really keep track of him. I didn't hear a lot of noise from him. Dakota just got released by the Rams. Oh, that's interesting. For me, best case scenario, 10 and 6. Worst case scenario, 6 and 10. But I think our defense and running game is solid QB play. I think 10 wins is feasible. I definitely agree. Great stream, Rico. Can't wait for the next one. Appreciate that, Redskins Millennial. I'm about to end the stream now. I got to abide by the time limit. I'm going over, but I love talking to y'all. Wish I could stream all day, but I'm pretty busy. Busy, Like I said, again, I might stream a little bit later, but I got to watch my Georgia game at 7. We'll see. I'll be here if you stream again. Appreciate that, Delonte. All right, salute, Armand. All right, y'all, I'm checking out. Appreciate everybody that pulled up. If you haven't, make sure you like the stream. Make sure you subscribe, like I said. Um, just an outro. 
going to be doing some game previews um, for the, especially the biggest games where I compare our our position groups to theirs, our stats versus theirs, what happened last time we played them. That's, those videos are going to be coming out before Sunday, probably like a Thursday or something. And if we play Thursday, I'm going to try to have that out like Tuesday. Then I'm going to live stream during every regular season game, hopefully every playoff game if we make it. And then I'm going to end the stream. Shortly after that, I'm going to have a live stream for post-game reactions from me and y'all. I'm going to have it set up to where y'all can call up. I'm going to get the phone lines working. Y'all can call up, speak your piece to the stream, yell at Jay Gruden, whatever you want to do, all of that. Talk about, you. shout out whoever you want to shout out, who, who, um, who performed the best. Like Jonathan Allen had a hell of a day, all of that type of stuff. You can call out, say whatever you want to say, debate with me, debate with the other people in the stream, all of that type of stuff. Um, later, JB. Appreciate you coming up. Appreciate you all y'all for pulling up. I catch you later, Dave. I'm out.